Hi there everyone, my name is Pirag Juthani, a third year medicine resident at Stanford, and today we're going to talk about the match results. Specifically, there have been several videos I've already made about the match, about the overall match rate across MD, seniors, DO seniors, and IMGs, but today we're going to talk specifically about orthopedic surgery, which historically tends to be a very competitive specialty. We'll go over the average step 2 CK scores, how to stand out based on the data, and ultimately even some of the new research nuances. One thing that you'll see today is a lot of my data will be broken up by MD seniors, DO seniors, and IMGs, both US IMGs and non-US IMGs. US IMGs refers to you people who have a US citizenship who are international medical graduates, and non-US IMGs refers to individuals who are not US citizens and also trained at an international medical school. With that being said, MD seniors are individuals who went to an MD university within the United States, and DO seniors are those who went to a DO university within the United States, and seniors implies that they're going directly from medical school to residency. So breaking down the orthopedic surgery match this year, you'll see that around 916 total positions have been offered across the United States. For those 916 positions, there was around 1,500 applicants, which implies that the acceptance slash match rate was around 9 over 15. That also means that now we can break this match rate up across the different types of applicants. And you'll see that for US MD seniors, individuals who went to an MD school and are going straight from resident, um, straight from medical school to residency, the match rate was 73%. On the other hand, for US DO seniors, individuals from DO schools, the match rate was 47.5%. For US IMGs, the match rate was 19.3%, with six out of 31 people matching. And for non-US IMGs, two out of 16 people match, which is 12.5%. You will see that if you add up all of these numbers, if you add up the total number of MD applicants, DO applicants, IMGs, and non-US IMGs that applied, it will not add up to 1448. And the reason it won't add up to 1448 is because there's other individuals who do not fit into these four buckets, such as MDs who graduated a while ago and are now applying to orthopedic surgery, which are known as MD grads or DO grads. And that's ultimately the reason why not everything adds up. But that's beside the point. We can now break down each of these categories based on individuals who match and individuals who didn't match. So that's what I've done here. These are individuals with an MD degree who are seniors who match. These are individuals without an, with an MD degree who did, did not match. These are individuals with a DO degree who match. These are individuals with a DO group degree that did not match. IMGs, US IMGs that matched and did not match, and non-US IMGs that matched and did not match. And now we're going to go through these seven categories, including the average step 2 CK score, the number of research experiences, and so on and so forth, and see how they differed across individuals who matched and those who didn't. We'll start with step 2 CK. One thing I want to point out here is the general trend that individuals who match generally have a step 2 CK score around 250, and the step 2 CK score tends to be higher among those who match compared to those who did not match. The only exception here would be for US IMGs. The US IMGs that match, there are only three of them, and that's probably why the step 2 CK score is lower than 246, um, primarily because um, it's not large enough of a sample size to give you the true representation. You can also see the same thing here with a non-US IMG, um, only one of them that ended up matching and shared data. I don't want to imply that these are the only individuals that ended up matching. There are many more people who may have matched, but these are the individuals that agreed to share their data. And this is why it's helpful just for you to put this into context. For if you're an MD senior, the average step 2 CK score for individuals who matched was 257 compared to 246. And similarly, for DO seniors who matched, it was 251 compared to 241. Now we can go on to the next category, which is the average number of research experiences. Research experiences refer to the fact that if you work in a lab, that's one research experience, even if that lab generated 15 publications. So just so you know, research experience is different from the number of abstracts, publications, and posters you have. That's kind of the nuance there. But with that being said, I want you to realize that the number of US, the number of research experiences is not at all telling. Just because you have more research experiences doesn't necessarily mean you're more likely to match. In fact, individuals who ended up having um, more research experiences here, you can see that they were in an unmatched group compared to those who matched. But on the other hand, if you now break this down into the number of publications, abstracts, and posters, then you start seeing an actually different story. If you look at it, the one that I want to point out right here is the non-US IMG that matched had 100 
abstracts, publications, and posters. Obviously, this whole column is going to be skewed because this is just one person's data compared to 11 people here. And again, this is three, so you're going to see a skewed representation. The one I want to focus a bit more on is the 587 MD seniors who matched and agreed to share their data, 23.8 abstracts, publications, and posters compared to 18. Similarly, for DO students, 11.2 compared to 7. And the US IMGs that match 30 compared to 27. All of this to say it tends to imply that more publications, abstracts, posters, and being academic increases likelihood of matching, but that's not always the case, primarily because just because you have more publications, people can sometimes see right through that. I want to point out here the US IMGs and non US IMGs, they had a lot of publications and still did not match. And this just shows you that just because you're doing research, um, you usually want to have it be meaningful research and more importantly, something you can talk about. The next category is individuals that um, went to a top 40 medical school based on um, funding criteria, based on the NIH funding. Obviously, you'll see that individuals cannot have NIH funding if they were IMGs, so that's why you're, there's not going to be anything here. And most DO schools don't have NIH funding, so that's why you're only going to see data for the MD portions here. And for this, you can see that 33% of the people who matched USMD seniors went to top 40 medical schools, the prestigious medical schools, compared to 20.7. But this also implies that 70% of people who did match into ortho did not go to a top 40 NIH rated medical school, which is reassuring. You don't have to go to a great school or a prestigious school to match as long as you have other things that the program directors are looking for. And speaking of other things, I'd say that one other piece that most people miss is the fact that the biggest correlate of whether or not you will match is the number of interviews you get. The more interviews you get, the more places that you can list out on your rank list, and the more places that you list out on your rank list, the more likely you are to match. So when I say continuous ranks here, what I'm implying is the number of ranks you listed on your rank list. And the people who ended up matching, you'll see that they listed on average around 12 places compared to six on the people who did not match. Similarly, for DO seniors, they listed six of them compared to the four that the non-matched individuals listed. In general, by having more places on your match list, you're more likely to match. I'd say this is one of the most important uh, predictors of whether or not you will match. AOA is an um, institution or organization within medical schools, specifically MD medical schools, that usually is for the top 10 or 15% of the class academically. The whole point of AOA is almost like an honor privilege thing, where if you're academically at the top of your class, this is a way for you to show program directors that. Again, it is something that helps your application. It's by no means the only reason your application should stand out. But you'll see that of the people who matched in MD schools, 34% were AOA compared to 15% of those who did not match. Um, obviously, having AOA helps, but you see that it's not everything because 15% of people who were AOA still did not match compared to the USMD seniors. DO schools usually don't have AOA, and that's why there's an NA here. And last but not least, I wanted to point out that sometimes people think having a, another degree sometimes can be helpful. That's not always the case. Here you can see that of the people who match MD senior-wise, 18.2% of, of them had another degree compared to 247 of those who did not match as a US MD senior. Both DO seniors who match and DO seniors who did not match, both of them had about 30% of individuals who um, had another degree. Again, I don't want to put too much weight on the IMG and the non-US IMG just because there's a sample size of one, but this person clearly had another degree compared to all three of them not having one. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it did, shed some insight. I hope you give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace.